Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited, and welcome to New Toy Tuesdays, an occasional slot where I show off something shiny that has come my way. Items I show here are new to me, if not the market, and may either be something I've purchased directly or be supplied to me by a manufacturer or wholesaler for trial or review. Beware, however, reviews are honest, and I will point out any flaws as I see them. And tonight's tool of choice is the Klein Tools ET910 uh, USB digital multimeter and tester. USB tester? USB what? What on earth are you talking about, David? You prick. Why would I need a USB tester? I'm an electrician. Well, yeah, okay. Um, I, I don't know about you, but uh, a lot of these USB sockets are now being fitted and... Um, uh, they're, they're okay. I, I do have a bit of an issue with them in that there's no way to disconnect the USB charge circuitry in there. I think that there shouldn't be any permanently connected loads in these things. I think there should be a way to isolate them. There should be a, a switch somewhere where you can isolate that load between line and neutral. Otherwise, you can't do your, your IR testing between line and neutral. And also, there's no way to, to physically shut off what's inside there if it goes faulty. So, you know, I've got my reservations about them, but I do use them myself. I've got them uh, in my own place, as I'm sure most other people have. And of course, I've got no qualms about installing them where people want them installing, which is pretty much everywhere these days. Uh, so we have one here, uh, but uh, how do we know that the, the USB portion of it works? Well, um, until now, my uh, method of testing, such as it is, is to get one of these IKEA snake lights and to plug it in and go, oh yes, okay, well there you go. That works then, doesn't it? Um, and it's all rather low tech. And I, I leave the client to tell me if it's, uh, well, if it's not working or not. If they, if they need to come back to me and say, oh, that USB charge socket's not working anymore. And I have had a couple of those. Um, so to test it more robustly and to get an idea of whether it's working uh, as fitted uh, or to test it if the client's reporting that it's not working as expected, that's when uh, the Klein Tools ET910 comes into play. Now, unlike last week's quick reel, which was supplied to me kindly by the good folks at Superrod for testing, this is something I've gone out and bought myself uh, because I saw it on their Twitter feed and thought, oh, I, I, I'm always a sucker for a new toy. So uh, let's get one of those in and have a bit of a play. And it's much smaller than I expected. I thought looking at the Twitter feed, it was going to be a bigger unit, but it, it's, it's a, a widgy little thing, isn't it? There's nothing to it. No battery compartment in it. It's USB powered. Uh, it looks like it's got a speaker. This is actually for ventilation, and the instructions do say that it can overheat. Um, so that's interesting, isn't it? I think if you if you leave it under a um, with a heavy load passing through it, then uh, in, a, in a warm room, then it, it can warm up quite a bit. And I, I mentioned about a load passing through it because it does have a pass through port, so you can, as well as testing uh, the the output of the socket you can use this to monitor a connected load okay um, now I do this is nothing new by the way uh, and if I reach down here I've had this for a few years you might have seen it in the background on some previous videos this is the same kind of the same sort of thing except it was about five quid off Amazon instead of about 60 quid at CEF I do think if the price point of that was half as much then uh, it, it would be have a better potential uptake I don't think there's many people watching this out there who are thinking you know 60 quid I'm not going to bother thanks very much but let's carry on having a look at it this thing here is a, a something that's a lot more simpler if I plug it into my socket it take, gives me a voltage reading and then it will flick over to a current reading the current is going to be a big fat zero it's present because there's nothing passing through it but if I were to connect a load to here then this thing would sit between the supply and the load and it would tell me what the supply voltage is around the 5 volt mark as we expect and uh, what the load current passing through it is which again can be nice for diagnostic purposes very basic uh, fairly effective does what it says on the tin cost about a fiver you can get cleverer versions of these things with a like a dot matrix lcd display which will give you more information probably the same sort of information as the klein does except um, the klein has an additional function which allows us to put things actually under a load test so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab me hoofa doofa here and zoom into this socket that we've got going on here you won't be able to see my pretty face anymore more's the pity and we can see that this is a 2.1 amp uh, outlet and if I plug in the Klein and I'll try and zoom in a bit we've got a quite a nice um, nice little display here I don't know if it's uh, LED or 
uh, an inverted LCD, but we've got this this black on white which works works rather well. And we can see on there it's giving us a voltage, 5.01 volts, a pass through current of zero amps because nothing's passing through it. Uh, we also have counters for milliamp hours and watt hours. So again, if there were a load par uh, passing through it, it, it could measure uh, over time what kind of um, current and uh, wattage has been taken. And of course, it has got a timer to say. Uh, what the time the measured time period was uh, if I press the mode button we end up with uh, exactly the same information again curiously enough just presented in a slightly different format uh, and with one change so we've still got the current we've still got the voltage we've still got the milliamp hour and watt hour counts and we still have the timer the only difference now is instead of those fields being um, headed um, instead of it saying the word timer by the time or the word time by the time and volker etc we just have some some bigger numbers and one other addition which is as you can see a resistance value uh, now if i switch it onto tesla let's go for half an amp this is a 2.1 amp socket so it should cope with half an amp and we can see that uh, our voltage has dropped to 4.99 volts so it's still around the 5 volt mark and we've taken 0.55 amp over a couple of seconds it's applied a resistance of oh well it's supposed to be about 10 ohms 9.07 ohms it says a bit of ohms are always obviously um, 5 over 10 will give you a half uh, and it's presented that as a pass so we know that we can drag uh, half an amp out of this socket without uh, any trouble let's go to the one amp setting and obviously now this time it's going to apply a 5 ohm resistance or thereabouts and we can see yes we've still got 5 volts uh, we're pulling just over an amp it's given it a pass jolly good too we should be able to take 2 amps out of it so if you can guess what the resistance will be now 2.5 ohms, 2 amps, 5 volts, another pass, jolly good. I wonder what's going to happen if we try and take 3 amps out of it. Remember this is rated at 2.1 amps, this socket, so uh, let's see what happens when we select the 3 amp function. Now a couple of things can happen here. Um, in this case, this particular socket, we can see the voltage has dropped a bit. It's dropped to three, well, dropped to three volts. So um, USB is supposed to be about five volts. So it's gone lower than perhaps we'd like. The current has remained at 2.19 amps, and this is a 2.1 amp socket. So we're not getting any more current out of it than it was designed for, which is as expected. That's okay. It's marked it as a fail. Um, it, it's. Um, more of a failure of the test than of the the socket itself uh, it's not really sort of failed anything it's just that it hasn't been able to produce the three amps that the test requirement um, had given it so um, so that tells us that this this socket is limited to to that maximum current and then we're not going to get many more out of it your socket might have um, some kind of protection built in so instead of it hitting and holding at its maximum um, range there it might just cut the power completely uh, i tried that with my battery usb charger and that's what that did if i tried to take more out of it than it could cope with it just turned the output off and all that meant was that because this hasn't got a battery and it just went dead so that's an indicator that you're taking more than than it can handle um so that's uh, that's all, all fine and dandy now um let's just zoom out for a minute let's have a little play with the pass through function i'm going to take my phone here i've been on a long phone call this evening so we're, it's already uh, low on charge after a day's use and i'm going to plug this into the um the usb socket at the bottom let's zoom back in and see what it's doing the phone's come up to say it's now charging is that coming up on the display all right oh if I press the mode button again wouldn't it okay so we can see we are taking out 5 volts and we're taking out 0.44 amps um, it's reading the resistance at around 11.3 ohms um, and we can now see that the timer is incrementing as is the milliamp hour and watt hour counters so if I were to leave that I could uh, it would tell me how much she, the the um, connected device has taken over a period of time now you might look at that and think hang on a sec uh, 0.44 amps 0.43 amps that's not very much that's not going to charge that big phone very quickly is it david you knobhead well quite right and if i change that cable for one that i bought from a petrol station a bit more recently it's still usb a to usb c nothing different there but if i change the cable oops 
plug that in. Nothing's changed other than the cable, but you can see that the phone is now taking uh, 1.44 amps and a much lower resistance is being recorded, 3.52 ohms. Um, so we're getting more current out of it because the resistance has dropped and you should notice that the uh, hopefully the milliamp hour and watt hour counters will start to um, to increment uh, as well as they are doing yes jolly good okay so um, wh why the difference well the the other cable the smaller cable which I've just lost there it is um, has a higher resistance uh, it's a resistance of the cable itself, and that's uh, that's something quite interesting with USB because you um, you don't always think you think that USB cables are all well all the same, uh, but they're not. Uh, some have a higher resistance than others, and that affects the kind of power they can provide or the uh, charging time that they can provide. So, um, if you have a say a, um, a USB cable plugged into one of these sockets or into a your, your cigarette lighter in your car or whatever and it's taking forever to charge your phone it might actually be the cable at fault it might not necessarily uh, the device not putting out the amount of current that you're expecting it to put out uh, not necessarily a problem with your phone but it may be a problem uh, with the resistance of the cable that you're using you might need to do what I did and go to a petrol station and buy a new one that's got a, uh, a bit less resistance and uh, is capable of allowing your device to take more power. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's quite interesting. One other thing to mention, but well, I've got to go get the manual for that, and it's over there. Back in a moment. There we go. Nothing like preparedness, is there? Uh, I just have to get the manual because I haven't actually used this bit yet. Uh, but I was just reading that uh, there are actually uh, ten memory locations in this thing. So let's have a look at what they do, shall we? If I um, zoom this back in, all very technical this. Okay, if I press the mode button, we've seen that it switches to a, a different display with well, the same information but presented in a slightly different way. But if I keep pressing it, we're now in the memory locations. This is memory 1, memory 2, memory 3 and so on, all the way up to memory 10. Uh, so what's that all about? Well, let me connect my mobile phone again using the fast charger fast cable uh, we can see now that uh, we're starting to monitor what's passing through the uh, tester here so we have 5 volts 1.3 1.4 ish amps uh, and the milliamp hour and watt hour counters are incrementing along with the time counter now uh, let's say I want to um, record what's what or memorize what's been recorded over a set period of time obviously we've only been going for 30 odd seconds here but perhaps if i'd been monitoring a load for longer i'd want to record what that information was if i press the mode button for three seconds in the top right corner you should see m1 flash which means that what was on the display at that time has now been committed to memory one i do it again it'll commit it to memory two so we can do that for up to 10 memory locations um, I wonder if it remembers it after a power reset. Let's find out, shall we? So I've just reset the thing and I'm going to switch to the memory locations and yes, it's remembered it. So memory one, we can see we ran for 39 seconds and we, we, we recorded uh, the data here that we recorded. Memory two was taken at 49 seconds and it shows what's been recorded there. So if you're, um, remember, if you're recording a load that's passing through it, uh, and you, you've been monitoring that for some time, then rather than getting out a pen and paper and scribbling it all down, you can commit it to memory. And I believe if I hold this down for five seconds, all memory locations will be flushed. Expunged, if you will. Yes, there we go, memory two is now empty. Uh, so that could be quite a useful feature. I can't think personally myself of any reason why I would want to monitor um, traffic from a USB port. Uh, other than for shits and giggles. Um, for me, the value is more about testing whether a USB socket uh, is doing 
what it's supposed to be doing, whether it's providing the voltage it's supposed to be providing, whether it's living up to the uh, current rating that's stamped on the front, uh, either because a customer has supplied me with some shite from eBay that they want me to install and I'm thinking, hmm, you know, what is this actually going to do when it says on the tin? Or because I've supplied something uh, from one of my reputable suppliers uh, and I've put it in, I want to make sure it works and it delivers the kind of current that it's supposed to be delivering. Or I've been called out by a customer where I've installed one of these and they're saying, well, it's not charging my phone anymore. I can go in and or, or it's my charging my phone really slowly or something like that. I can go in with this and I can plug it in and go, well, it's pro it's providing the load current that it says it's going to provide. Let's let's just plug your phone in, shall we, with your cable and, and see what happens there. And uh, I may be able to blame it on their cable or something like that. Uh, so yeah, interesting thing. As I say, a lot for what it is, it should be half the price in my opinion. Um, but where are you going to get another one? It's the only one I know of on the market. If indeed you feel you need one at all. Uh, if you don't, then I imagine you're probably back to doing what I used to do uh, and plugging in your token USB device and leaving the client to report back as to whether the thing is actually working or not. Anyway, that was just another quick new toy Tuesday for you. Um, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, and a quick shout out to my man Tim, aka Procell. I said I'd do that. <laughs>